Okay, so um, we are going to continue with our integration for trigo functions, uh, right? Okay, then um, generally for A2 level, there are three basic types of uh, trigo function that you need to know how to do the integration for it. All right, so the first one is cos, the second one is sine, and the third one is secant squared. So why do we have all these three? It's because of last time when we learned the differentiation, right? We learned differentiate the sine, you get a cos. Therefore, when you want to integrate the cos, you get a sine. Okay, and last time when we integrate cos, I got negative sine. So when I want to integrate the sine now, negative, I bring it over. So integrate the sine, you'll get a negative cos. Last time when we learned how to differentiate the tangent, you get secant squared. Therefore, now you need to know that when you integrate secant squared x, you'll get the tangent x. So these are the three basic trigo functions that you need to know how to do the integration. Okay, all right. So the same thing happens if let's say you're having the multiple of the angle. Like if you want to integrate cos mx, so you'll get sine mx also. Copy back the angle, sine and x, mx, and then you differentiate the mx here, differentiate the angle, you'll get m. So you divide it by m. For differentiation, you do it the other way around, right? You multiply m, but for integration, you, you divide the m. Okay, so the same thing happens for the sine. Differentiate, uh, integrate sine, I got negative cos. Then you do the differentiation inside the uh, angle, then you get an m. Therefore, you divide it by m. Same thing happens for secant square also. When you integrate secant square, you get tangent mx. Then you differentiate the mx here, you get a m. Therefore, you divide it by m. So these are the basic integration that we have. Uh, all right, so let's start with some very basic, um, how to say, basic um, examples, all right? Okay, let's say I'm having um, cos 2x, let's say. So when I want to integrate cos 2x, what will I have? Integrate cos, I will have sine. So copy back the angle sine 2x, divide the you differentiate the angle, differentiate 2x, you get a 2. So plus c. Okay, so this is what we have. Lah. All right, and then after that, what else do we have? Okay, so maybe you want to integrate sine. Okay, when you want to integrate sine, pi minus 4x, then what you get? So integrate sine, you get negative cos, right? Then you copy back the angle. You differentiate the angle now. Differentiate pi minus 4x, you get negative 4. So you divide it by negative 4, then plus c. So if you try to simplify, you have 1 over 4 cos pi minus 4x plus c. Okay, then the same thing happens. If I say you want to do the integration, integration for secant square um, 3x, so integrate secant square, you have tangent. Then you copy back the 3x. Differentiate the 3x, you get a 3. So you divide it by the answer by 3. All right, so this is what we have here. Lah, all the three types of the basic integration. And then sometimes you might need to link it with a little, uh, link it a little bit with the, um, how to say, uh, your, your, some of the identity or some of the formula that you learned before. As an example, uh, a basic one as an example, if let's say they want you to integrate 1 over secant 2x. So some students will say, hey, did you I only learn how to integrate cos sine and secant square? I cannot integrate sec uh, secant square, but I cannot integrate secant. All right, so how can I do the 1 over secant 2x? Okay, if you want to integrate 1 over secant 2x, what is secant 2x? So secant 2x means 1 over cos 2x, right? Okay, so when you have 1 divided by 1 over cos 2x, generally you're having cos 2x. Okay, so can you integrate cos 2x or not? Yes. So you're having sine 2x divided by 2 plus c. So the trigger integration can be a bit more complicated because of all the identity that you learned before. So like this one, when you look at it at first, right, you thought that you cannot integrate, but actually you can because you can change it become cos function. And after that, you can integrate straight away. All right, okay, so maybe we try another example here. Uh, if I say I want you to do this integration, okay. So maybe we are thinking like this. Uh, if I want you to integrate, um, let me think about it. Uh. 
let's say I want you to do the integration for 1 plus tangent squared. 3x, let's say. Okay, so maybe you will tell me, hey, I, I can integrate the 1, no, because it is a constant, uh, but can I integrate tangent squared or not? In the list here, you didn't see any tangent squared, right? So it seems like you cannot do the integration. But actually, try to uh, recall back, is there any identity that you have, which is related to tangent squared and also the 1? Okay, so maybe if you recall back, uh, last time you learned something like this, 1 plus tangent square x equals to secant square x. This is the identity that you learned it before in chapter 3. Okay, so I'm trying to apply this here. So when I have 1 plus tangent square 3x, I can change it become secant square 3x. So can you integrate secant square 3x now? Okay. So in the basical square 3x, you will have tangent 3x, then divided by 3 plus c. Okay, all right. So just have a look at this is some idea or suggestion. When you have the questions that you cannot solve it directly or maybe integrate directly, you have to try to think, is there any trigger identity or trigger formula that is suitable for you to use and apply to change it become the pattern that you can do the integration. Yeah, so this is what we have here. All right. Okay, so now again the same thing happened here. Now when you want to do the integration, now, when you want to apply the integration rule that you learned here, generally what you need to do is like you have to make sure that it is only applicable for cos power one and also mx power one. Sine power one, mx power one only Second square only and also mx power 1 only. So all power here, okay, please make sure that you remember only for power 1. Inside, uh, except the second square, right? Okay, so if you say they want you to do the integration for cos square 2x, all right, so you cannot do it for now because you might have some other techniques to do the integration later, all right? Or maybe if they tell you that, oh, okay, I want to find out the sine power 3, 2x. Also, you cannot do it yet. You have some other method to solve it later. Okay, so for all these, are, they are just the basic integration for trigger only. Basic means that you have to follow all this power. Alright, all the patterns here, that only you can apply the rules for the input. Yeah, and then uh, maybe some of you will ask also, hey, can I integrate tangent or not? Can, but not now. Alright, you'll learn it maybe later. Okay, so again, there are some certain uh, techniques or certain rules that you need to apply other patterns of trigger. So these are the basic ones that you should know for now. Okay, all right. Okay, so if no problem, I just want you to have a try for example five. Again, please pause the video here and then you try it out first, then come back for the answer. So I'll just straight away show the answer here. So part A, answer is negative half, then cos 2x plus 5 plus c. Okay, then for part B, answer should be negative sine pi over 2 minus x plus c. Okay, how about part c? 5 over 2 tangent 2x over 5 plus c. And also for part d, answer you should have 2 over 3 squared 3. So this one you might need to use some very basic trigger uh, values of the, like the triangle to help you to get this answer. Okay, so just make sure that you try it out. It is something basic, okay, to see whether you understand how to do the basic integration or not. Okay, then after that, we continue to example 6. Example 6 is actually a application question. So they want to find the area under the graph. So you see the word area under the graph, you know that you have to do integration. And then for this function, from x equals to 0, as far as the first point, which the graph cuts the positive x axis. So when the graph cuts the x axis, right, what does it mean? That means that you need to let y equals to 0 and you solve it for the first x. Okay, so maybe I need to solve it first. I'm having y equals to sine and then 2x plus 1 over 3 pi. Then uh, I will let it equals to 0. Okay. So now I try to get all 
the answer that I will get sine inverse equal to zero. So sine inverse equals to zero, I might have zero. Then I might have pi. And I might have two pi. Okay, then I bring the pi over three over because uh, so zero negative one over three pi. Zero minus one over three pi, you get a negative value. We only want the positive x. Right, so I ignore the first answer here. Then the second answer is pi, you minus 1 over 3 pi, then you'll get 2 over 3 pi. They only need one answer, so I'll just keep it like this. The 2 pi, I will just leave it. I will just ignore it. Now. All right, so how I get 0 pi and 2 pi? I get it from the sine graph. You cannot get it from finding out the four quadrant, but you can only get it from the sine graph because sine inverse 0 is a special value. The 0 is a value, so you can only get a value from sine graph. How to get the sine graph again? Go back to your AS level chapter 5. All right? Okay, so if you continue from here, then you will get the answer which is f is pi over 3. So where do I need to apply this pi over 3 here? I need to apply it in my integration. So area, you integrate from 0 until pi over 3. Okay, and then the function sine 2x plus pi over 3. Okay, so so we'll ask also, is it for sure that I need to put it in a radian form, the radian unit? Can I put it in degree or not? Cannot. So for all the questions that involve differentiation or integration, right, that involve trigger, so you basically have to change everything, become radian. You cannot apply it in degree. Yeah, so all the value here, uh, you should know that everything is in radian. Uh. Okay, so integrate sign, what do you get? So again, you apply the knowledge, uh, integrate the negative cost, copy the angle, and then you do the differentiation for the angle. Lah. So when you do the differentiation, you get a 2. And then you're having pi over 3, 0. Again, I like to take out all the constant before I want to substitute any value in it. Okay, so if I continue from here, okay, so pi over 3, when you substitute it in, so the first one you have cos pi, Okay, then minus, you have cos pi over 3. Okay, then you try to substitute in the value. So cos pi means negative 1. Okay, cos pi over 3 means half. 60 degrees, so means half. Therefore, if you continue further, then you have negative half. Minus 3 over 2. And finally, you will get 3 over 4. Okay, so this is how we find the basic integration for trigo in application question. Okay, so again, if you look at it, generally you need some basic knowledge on chapter 5 AS level to solve the trigo equation. Then after that, you need to apply the integration technique that you learn it here. And all are basic, are substitute value and everything is simplified. So all are basic. Okay, so just make sure that you know how to apply it. The methods and everything is still the same. Okay, for the application question that you learned it before. Alright, so this is what we have for the basic uh, integration for trigo function. So we have a lot more types of different trigo function, right? When you're having cos square, x, how you do the integration. When you're having sine square, when you're having tangent, how you do the integration. We will learn it in the next part, right?